Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the North Lincolnshire series, a district of 56 parishes in the north of Lincolnshire. Let's see which one we're visiting today. Good morning, folks. It's pitch black. I'm starting this one really early in the morning, but it's a necessity. The moon's still up. Look at this. That's a full moon as well, would you believe? And that row of lights you can see in the distance, I'll be walking down there later. Hopefully it'll be uh, light by the time I get to that. Now, the reason I'm starting this one so early is because I need to get through the main village and all the other little villages around it before a major event takes place today. Welcome to Haxi. This North Lincolnshire episode is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find her link in the description. And this video is also sponsored by Jamie's Fitness Studio. Based on Low Road Grayingham near Curtin and Lindsay, Jamie is one busy lady. Check her out by calling 07906 749 574 or emailing hello at jamies.co.uk. Online membership is available. There's a link to her Facebook page in the description. Jamie's Fitness Studio. Get fit, get happy, get healthy. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Haxi is the 12th and final parish on the Isle of Axholme in North Lincolnshire. It's commonly considered a town, despite not officially having town status. It lies directly to the south of Epworth on the A161, between it and Misterton in Bassetlaw. Haxi was regarded as the historic capital of the Isle of Axome. In fact, the word Axome is a direct reference to the village. It literally means island near or around Haxi. Unlike most of the isle, there are hills here, and the village stands on one of the island's highest points. The hills reach a maximum height of around 133 metres, protruding from what was once marshland before the isle was drained by the channel's favourite Dutch engineer. As well as Haxi, the parish covers some smaller settlements around it. These include West Woodside, Burnham, East Lound and Grays Lound. In 1741, a major part of the village, 62 houses around the church, was destroyed by a great fire. Now, just before we get going, I need to address Haxi's playing field, not featured in this video. It was supposed to be the first part of my route, but it was still too dark to capture it properly. I reckon the inclusion of Haxi's 664-year-old traditional game, though, will make up for that. After all, this was recorded on January the 6th. We start at the High Street's junction with Low Street at the Market Cross. This is located in its original position, and it's one of three crosses in Haxi. It stands next to one of four pubs we'll be seeing throughout this episode. This is the King's Arms. Keep all the pubs in mind, they'll be important later. The High Street is also where you can catch a bus, two in fact. These are the 291 and 399 services, the latter of which goes to North Lindsay College. The High Street has most of the village's amenities. 
That building there is Mowbray's Cafe, a name which will crop up a few times in this episode. There's also a youth club close by. This used to be a workshop called Haxi Engineering until it was recently repurposed at a cost of a quarter of a million pounds. The Haxi Memorial Hall is practically next door. From preschools to plays, library services to coffee mornings, the hall is a flexible space catering for a variety of needs. Now, as far as the route goes, I was in two minds at this point as to what to do. What, do I carry on up towards the church or do I turn right? I've opted to turn right here. This is uh, Vine Hall Avenue. It's basically a, a housing estate, which I'm going to walk around. And it's dead opposite Haxi's co-op main shop. Haxi does okay for itself in terms of shops. This is its main shop, a co-op, which stands opposite Vine Hall Avenue. This opened in 2013 at a cost of £1.2 million. And standing across from it is a brick building which is a block of public toilets. You have to say, North Lincolnshire does well with these. This then takes us up into a housing estate. Most of this central part of Haxi is residential. As a general rule of thumb, this area developed from the 1950s onwards. However, the further west you go, the houses generally become older, dating from Victorian times or even earlier. This is the Green Hill area of Haxi, and now we've arrived at the village's other main shop, Green Hill Wines, which stands on the corner of Green Hill Road and the High Street. The shop is also opposite a small triangular green, on which is a medieval cross, known locally as the Cross of Piety. The village stocks were once here as well. So basically, the further to the west you go, the older the uh, place becomes. The newest sections are sort of to the east and to the west it gets much older, much more ancient. Now, we've stopped at this green here, where you can see this road sign which uh, directs us towards Scunthorpe and Gainsborough and Gaul that way, Doncaster and Westwood side that way. And behind here you can see an old road sign. It's obviously been covered up now, but uh, yeah, Doncaster that way, Gainsborough that way. The Cross of Piety is also known as the Mowbray Cross. The Mowbrays were a local land-owning family, the medieval lords of Haxi Manor. Next, we pass the local surgery as we head up the hill towards the church and past Haxi's two other pubs. First up, it's the Loco. This has been a lot of things in its time. A chemist's, a wool shop, and a children's bookshop, and even a chippy too. It became a pub in 1985, and it's still going strong. Its near neighbour, the Duke William, had recently closed, but it's now changed hands and is being renovated. Given what day this was, it was also open later. At the top of the hill, we pass Nicholas House Care Home. This is an old vicarage which was built in 1846 on the site of at least two previous ones. The garden at the front of it is described on the architect's original plans as a pleasure ground. When it was sold, a new vicarage was built to the west in 1987. Okay, so we've reached the church, which is here. We're going to have a look at that in a moment. The church hall is to the left, down this little track here. So I'm also going to go down there. And in front of the church is this stone. And we'll be talking a lot more about this stone later. Keep it in mind, along with all the pubs we've seen so far too. The Church of St Nicholas is a prominent landmark situated close to the highest point in the village. Its 90 foot high tower is visible from most of the parish. It was founded in the 12th century by the Earl of Mowbray, but little can be seen of the original structure. It's been changed and remodelled several times since then. A notable feature would be its Carillon, a large music box like structure dating back to 1707. It's very rare and it plays a tune at 9am, noon, 3pm and 6pm. Off to the left there's a small track which leads to the church hall. That's this building you can see in shot now. There's also a cemetery down here as well. 
opposite the church on the road is an old school, one of many in Haxi over the years. We'll be talking more about its schools shortly. After this the road runs towards West Woodside where we see a water tower. This was built in 1935 and is something of a local landmark. Ok so this is kind of the border between Haxi and West Woodside. I'll be doing a walk around West Woodside as well uh, when I finish this uh, tour of Haxi and the other little settlements which are around it. But first I've got to finish Haxi off itself. So now we turn round, go back past the church and then take a left turn just there and we'll be heading up towards the Nooking. To get back to where we started, we need to make our way to the Nooking. To do that, we need to walk along this restricted byway. The Nooking connects Greenhill Road to the A161. Another residential street, this acts as a handy thoroughfare for traffic heading north, as using it avoids the high street. Up here, we find Haxi's current primary school. The first school in Haxi was a free school, established in the village in 1654. A new school was then erected in 1861, which could accommodate for up to 150 children. This was followed by a national school in 1873, catering for 60 boys. Beyond the school you get an idea of how most of the Isle of Axome looks, flat land for miles around. You wouldn't know that Haxi has some hills. On the other side of the school there's a nature reserve which occupies a part of a former railway line, one we've met a few times before in fact. OK, so what we're going to do to end this video is follow the old railway line. It will take us to one of Haxi's three former stations. I'll talk a little bit about those next. This is the Axome Line Nature Reserve, complete with this lovely little wooden sculpture. The reserve is on part of what used to be the Axome Joint Railway. Let's follow the old line. We did this in Belton too if you can recall that episode. The site forms a trail between Belton and Haxi. In terms of stations, Haxi was served by three. Two of them, Haxi Junction and Haxi and Etworth, were located next to each other. They were both to the south of the village and they formed an interchange with what is now the Doncaster to Lincoln railway line, still in use today. This however is the site of the main village station, Haxi Town, which closed to passengers in 1933. Haxi and Epworth station lasted the longest of the three, closing in 1964. Next to the site of Haxi Town Station is Haxi's Methodist Church. There's also an old red phone box and a telephone exchange as we rejoin the High Street. Ah, this area looks a bit different in the daylight. When I got here this morning, I couldn't see anything. <laughs> it was uh, pitch black, as I'm sure you will uh, be aware of. Right, now, uh, there are more settlements around Haxi than just Haxi itself. Of course, the biggest one of those is West Woodside, and I'll be doing a walk around that, as I said earlier, uh, in a uh, few moments' time. But first, I need to take you on a tour of some of the smaller places around Haxi, including the likes of Burnham and East Lound and Grays Lound. So let's hop in the car and go for a drive. To start with, we're heading up the A161 and for the hamlet of Burnham. Look to your left and you'll see an old windmill, another iconic local landmark. It was built in 1811 and it's made of tarred black brick. Formerly known as Brock's Mill, since 1905 it's been known as Burnham or Wilkinson's Mill. This road continues north towards Epworth and soon we arrive in Burnham. Burnham is split into two parts. This is Low Burnham and yes, there is a High Burnham as well. The latter is so named thanks to the local elevation as it occupies the highest point of the Isle of Axome at some 133 metres above sea level. With not a lot of time today, I opted not to go to High Burnham, but there's a few things of note in Low Burnham. One thing it's famed for would be its well-preserved pinfold. It's one of four within the parish of Haxi. Low Burnham also used to have a pub called the Plough Inn on what is now the A161. 
and after a short drive around the place, we make our way back to the A161, returning to Haxi via Epworth Road. Our next location is East Lound. As we approach a junction which goes by the name of Burrell's Corner, you'll see the Henry Gilding Memorial, named after a local magistrate. It's the parish's war memorial and it features a World War I soldier. Names from both world wars are listed upon it, including those from West Woodside as well as Haxi. Now we're coming into East Lound via Bracken Hill Road. This is not the first time we've met a place with Lound in its name. East Lound derives its name from the old Scandinavian word Lunder, which means small wooded grove. This also applies to neighbouring Grays Lound. All of these settlements around Haxi, including West Woodside, have been predominantly based around agriculture since before medieval times. Before Vermoiden drained the Isle of Axome, it was an important area for the growing and processing of flax and hemp. Modern agriculture centres more around crops now, and there are many farms dotted around East Lound, Grays Lound, and both parts of Burnham. Now, as far as religious buildings go in these hamlets, a primitive Methodist chapel was built in East Lound in 1862, and it was closed in 1958. Apart from Bracken Hill Road, the other main road in East Lound is Carr Lane, an almost dead straight road which runs to the south, and that's where we are now. At the end of Carr Lane, I took a right turn, and now we're going to Grays Lound. Of similar size, Grays Lound stretches east from the A161 towards Oston Ferry. It's a linear settlement mainly, consisting of houses and a few farms. Some of its houses are notable. As we approach the A161 again, look to your right. In doing so, you'll see a big white building called Cumberworth Lodge, which is a care home. It's one of Grays Lounge's most historic buildings. It dates to the mid 18th century and it carries a Grade 2 listing. Further Grade 2 listed buildings here are Croft House, the 18th century Lound House on Main Street, and the Manor House on Grays Lounge Fields Road, built in 1791. At the end of the road, we reach the crossroads on which Grays Lound is centred. Now we're heading for West Woodside by going straight over it. This is Ake Ferry Road, which runs into the village centre. The name West Woodside developed as what was initially a general name for a collection of more small settlements. You see, originally, the western portion of Haxi Parish, known as the Westwood Side, two separate words, was composed of a series of hamlets. These were Park, Newbig, Nethergate, Upperthorpe, which was sometimes known as Overthorpe, and Commonside, and these have all since amalgamated to form one village. Okay, so here we are in West Woodside, which is the biggest of the other settlements around Haxi. In fact, if anything, it's a little bit bigger than Haxi, this. Um, let's see how long this one takes me to walk around. It took me about two hours to walk around Haxi. Uh, I don't think this is as long a route, to be honest with you. But uh, let's go and see what we can find here, shall we? In West Woodside, we start on Brethergate, and right off the bat, we have a major historical talking point in the form of this pillar box. This is unlike any we've ever seen before. This is an Edward VII pillar box, one of just 300 which were made, of which 150 survive today. There are nearly 100 replicas out there too, which were made at the end of the 1980s. After a walk down Brethergate, we pass some local shops and businesses, and we arrive at West Woodside's premier shop on Newbig. This is where we find a parish notice board at last. If there was one in Haxi, I never saw it. Mark it off, folks, there's only three left in North Lincolnshire now. Next to this is the Carpenter's Arms, West Woodside's one and only pub. Just like the ones in Haxi, keep this pub in mind for later. After following a footpath alongside the pub, we come to Commonside, and here's West Woodside's picturesque and peaceful little pond, or mere, if you will. So as usual with these ponds, you always find this kind of sign on them, don't you? 
danger, no swimming, no boating, no fishing. They always amuse me a little bit. I mean, obviously there's a serious side to them, but how in the world are you ever gonna get a boat on a pond this big? <laughs> it's just not gonna happen, is it? Anyway, let's carry on, let's keep going. This next section is dominated by residential properties. As mentioned earlier, West Woodside used to be a collection of small settlements many years ago. These have now merged together with an extensive amount of development between them. This part of West Woodside was the hamlet known as Park. It's now seamlessly merged into Commonside, another of the former hamlets, which is now nothing more than just a long residential road that leads back to Newbig. Amongst all these houses, there are clues as to how things used to be, if you know where to look. One such example is at the end of Commonside. These houses stand on the site of a former Wesleyan chapel, which dated from 1864, according to its date stone, which has been preserved in the wall of the modern building. Back on Newbig, we find some more businesses and local amenities. Here we find a pizza shop and a dental surgery. Westwood side also has a Chinese takeaway too. Okay, so now we've reached the bottom, bottom should I say, it's cold out here, of uh, Newbig, where there's a roundabout. That's Doncaster Road in front of me here. There's a car dealership on the left. Obviously Doncaster is that way. According to that sign there, it's 12 miles away. And if you go this way, it takes you towards Grays Lounge. That's where we're going. We're about to find the playing field. On Ake Ferry Road, we find West Woodside's old primary school, and next to it, there's a reading room. Since closure, the school has been converted into a house. Behind those buildings, you'll find West Woodside's playing field. Now, this will go some way to making up for the lack of footage from the one in Haxey. It features a play area and a few football pitches. There's also a pavilion, whose rooms provide the perfect place for a local committee meeting, and it can be hired on a regular basis. Westwood Side's current school is on Nethergate. We're heading for Westwood Side Church of England School, which was officially opened in May 1983. It replaced the old school on Ake Ferry Road nearby. In September 2012, it converted to standalone academy status. Next door to the school is the Village Hall. This came into being in 1949 through the efforts of local people, some of whom still use the hall today. Okay, a couple more buildings to see on Nethergate, and then we'll be back to the water tower, which we saw earlier in Haxey. Opposite Sandbeds Lane, we find Westwood Side's third primitive Methodist chapel. It was built in 1861 after previous ones in 1822 and 1835. Sticking to Nethergate, which is now a shallow incline, we pass Fields Funeral Directors, who've served this area of the Isle for many years. Halfway up the hill is the parish pump, which is well hidden. It's in a small garden, which is seemingly a part of the house behind it, but I'm not too sure on that one. After that, the hill starts to get much steeper, something of a rarity on the Isle of Axo. It's worth the climb though, so up we shall go. At the top, we rejoin Brethergate. For some reason, I was quite taken by this little house. I've no idea why, but I thought it was quite pretty. And our route around Westwood Side is completed by Tower Hill, this time seen from the other end, much closer to the water tower, which we've already mentioned.
And that's just about it for the parish of Haxey. I've covered all the settlements in the parish, with the exception, of course, of High Burnham, which I talked about earlier. And uh, yeah, it's been a, a thoroughly enjoyable morning. Two nice walks around two very nice villages. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. This has been the parish of Haxey, and I'm not done yet. Not done yet. And the reason for that is because Today is the day of the Haxi Hood. The Haxi Hood is the oldest traditional game in England. To explain its origins, we need to go back to 1359 when Lady de Mowbray was out riding in a field between Haxi and West Woodside. Her silk riding hood blew off in the wind, and 13 farm workers in the field tried to catch it by chasing it. It was finally caught by one of them, but he was too shy to hand it back. He gave it to one of the others to do so. Lady de Mowbray labelled this man as a lord, whilst the worker who had actually caught the hood was brandished a fool. Amused by the chase, Lady de Mowbray donated 13 acres of land on the condition that the chase for the hood would be reenacted every year. This reenactment over the centuries has become known as the Haxi Hood. The modern game is a little different to that initial chase. There's no silk riding hood, but there is a lord, and there is a fool too. There are no images online which show the original chase, obviously. What you're seeing here is how the chase is reenacted. It's a rugby-like scrum in which a leather tube is swayed to one of the four pubs we've already met. The King's Arms, the Loco, the Duke William, or the Carpenter's Arms. Whichever pub wins the hood earns the right to keep the leather tube all year until it's collected on New Year's Eve in time for the next Haxi Hood. The game is played on the 6th of January, the 12th day of Christmas, unless the 6th falls on a Sunday, in which case the event is held on the Saturday. In the weeks before the event, the hood party, consisting of the Lord, the Fool and the Boggins, who we'll talk about in a few moments, tour Haxi's neighbouring villages. Traditionally, they sing a number of well-known folk songs, including John Barleycorn and Farmer's Boy, the latter of which you've been listening to. The recording you're hearing is actually my own from the Carpenter's Arms, which is where the day's proceedings begin. Let's go there and join the action. Now the game itself doesn't start until about 3 o'clock, but there's a lot of build-up before that. It's about 11.30 right now and already there's a crowd starting to gather at the Carpenter's Arms in West Woodside because that is where they paint the fool. And I'm going to go and see that. So here we are at the Carpenter's Arms. If you come to the hood, this is where it begins. This might not look like much of a crowd at the moment, but trust me, it gets busier. The man in the red riding gear you can see there is the Lord of the Hood. That stick he's holding is his wand of office, a staff made from 13 willow wands. He's also holding the hood. That's the leather tube which is used in the game. During the game, you'll not be able to see the hood at all. The Lord is one of 13 men who you'll see dressed similarly. They represent the 13 characters from the original story. It's not long before the rest of the characters arrive. Eleven of them are the Boggins, one of which is the Chief Boggin. Dressed in red, these are the Hood's referees. And here is the Fool, this year played by a man called James Chatwin. With all the characters here, the Hood party make their way inside. This is followed by the singing of more traditional folk songs. The song you're about to hear is called Drink Old England Dry, rarely heard anywhere else but at the Haxi Hood. Is it? Is it a good one When the party emerge from the pub, you'll see that the fool's face has been ceremonially painted black. The fool also has the right to kiss any woman too. 
The party then move on to the other three pubs in Haxi, starting with the King's Arms, gradually working their way up to the church. More traditional folk songs are sung in each. I tried to get a bit closer to the action at the King's Arms, but all four pubs by this point of the day are heaving. Once the pubs have been visited, the fall is carried to the front of the church, so I opted, like many other people, to go to the church and wait there. Oh, and you might well see an ambulance or two as well at this point, like this one for example. That's because the game itself is quite rough, we'll get to that shortly. The fall is carried to the church and stands on that stone we met earlier. It's an old mounting block called the Mowbray Stone, and it's where he makes his traditional speech of welcome. During the speech, you'll notice smoke. A fire is lit with damp straw behind him, another tradition known as the smoking of the fall. Yeah. 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 
The two villages in play today are obviously Hatfield and Western Stars. Good luck to everybody involved in today's game. Let's have a good safe day. Tonight, there'll be a field. And we'll roast the board, but we've got a nut and mushroom roast for the vegetarian, vegan, and gluten intolerant. What a diverse set of people we are. <laughs> really fun. Well, as you can see, it's starting to warm up a bit. But it's time for the game to begin. <laughs> it's time for you to join in. And I think you know it because we've been to the schools to tell them. And it's... <laughs> Those words are hoose again hoose, tune again tune, if a man meets a man, knock him doon, but doant ought him, which translates as house against house, town against town, if a man meets a man, knock him down, but don't hurt him. Here's the fire. Centuries ago, the fool had to escape from a fire, and now it's a bit more watered down. After that, everyone then makes their way to Tower Hill, and the field between Haxie and West Woodside. This is where the game starts. The object of the game is to sway the hood to one of the four pubs. Before the main game starts, there's one final thing to do. The main hood is not thrown until the 12 sack hoods have been tossed all over the field. These are rolled hessian sacks sewn up to prevent them unrolling. This is a prequel to the main game and it's mainly for children. The youngsters in the crowd run for them when thrown and they attempt to get them off the field. The reward for doing this is the grand sum of three pounds. This whole process takes quite a while, but when they've all been thrown, it's time for the main game. One of the sack hoods has just hit me square on the head and I didn't have the camera recording. Damn it! <laughs> With the wand of office in the air, a crowd of people gather around the Lord. In a few moments, the hood will be thrown into the air. Unlike the sack hoods, the actual hood cannot be run with or thrown, instead it has to be swayed. As such, the hood is often called the sway hood. The result is a rugby-like scrum called a sway. There are no organised teams, but most people in the sway know where they want the hood to go. With one last cry of hoos again hoos, the hood is thrown and the game begins. Quite quickly, the sway becomes rough. The sway makes very slow progress, stopping quite often when it collapses in order for bodies to be pulled out of the mud below. Safety is of prime concern and the whole thing is supervised by the boggins. At any one time, there are usually around 200 people in the sway. Games can last anything from a couple of hours onwards and have been known to go on well into the night. Everything in the path of the sway goes down before it, including hedges and walls. Another of the Boggins' jobs is to stop the sway, destroying everything in its path. It's usually quite clear within the first hour or so which way the hood is going, but sometimes it's not, and the sway sort of gets stuck on the field. So the sway's been going for about half an hour now. Hasn't really moved very far, but it is moving in the direction of West Woodside. They seem to have a, a bit more brute force behind them.
since the game starts so late in the day, it also gets dark very quickly, and this adds an extra element to the game. It doesn't seem to know which way it wants to go. A few moments ago, it was very much heading towards Haxi, but now it's going the other way again. This could be uh, quite a long hood, this one. So I've made my way to the road for a few moments because uh, the sway has pretty much gone nowhere for the past sort of hour and a half now. Um, it's still practically in the same spot it was in the last couple of shots you've just seen. Uh, it will have to come to the road eventually um, and go to either Haxi or West Woodside. But I'm going to take a little bit of a break. Uh, I'm going to head to the car and uh, I've got some food with me because I've been out here a long time. I definitely need to eat. Um, and then uh, I'll come back and see where the sway is uh, when I've eaten. I made the right call. Upon returning to the field, the sway was almost off it and onto the road, coming in the direction of Haxi. This meant I had to run back to the car and move it as quickly as possible because once on the road, the sway can move much, much faster. So it's definitely coming to Haxi this year. The only question that remains now is which pub. The first one it passes is the Duke William. It's not long before it's at the church. A few moments ago, my car was parked close to here. With the hood definitely coming to Haxi, it's now a different game. At the beginning, all those pushing for the Haxi pubs are pushing the same way. Now, allies become enemies. So I've positioned myself outside the Duke William. Now the game ends when the landlord of the winning pub touches the hood. So let's see if the Duke William can win it. It's a bit dark, but hopefully you can see the Duke William. It's right there. And the sway is coming. Well, we got that answer rather quickly. It's gone past the Duke William without stopping. Next, it's the Loco. Right, same story. I'm outside the Loco. Let's see if they can win it. Outside the Loco, it was a much different story. With the return to the Duke William looking unlikely, it was really a choice of either the Loco or the King's Arms. It's not unheard of for the sway to go backwards, but it was clear that the Loco and the Kings had the most support this year. The Sway lingered around the Loco for quite some time. One side of the Sway is now pushing towards the King's arms, whilst the other pushes back for the Loco. This was quite a heated battle. Seems to be quite a bit of support for both pubs. The local aren't giving up without a fight. It's sort of stopped outside the door at the moment. With one final push, it was soon revealed which pub was to be this year's winner. The Loco has won the hood and now the celebrations can begin, which involve plenty of beer. Now what's supposed to happen now is the hood gets uh, drenched in beer and then hung up on two special hooks behind the bar. I was going to go in and try and have a look at that, but it's absolutely rammed in the Loco at the moment. I've got no chance of filming anything in there. So I'll let them enjoy their victory and I'll head back to the car, which I didn't move very far away. I literally parked on Home Dean, the next street over. So it's easy enough to get back to the car from here. Celebrations will go on in there for quite some time. 
So well done the loco for 2023. And uh, now I am officially done for the parish of Haxi. I do hope you've enjoyed that. It's not something we see all the time, is it? The Haxi hood, it's well worth coming to if you've never been to it before. So that's been the parish of Haxi and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiots. And for real this time, I am out.